Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to After Dark Conversations. After Dark, we are here, we are here, we are here, live and direct. We have our panel coming into the Zoom room, and we are live on Facebook. Yes, we are. So for those of you who have not joined us before, this is the show where we talk about singledom. We talk about the highs, the lows, all the things that we would normally whisper to our friends. We bring it to the forefront. We are here to take the, our masks off and go behind the black curtain to find out how we can get to the place that we want to get to in our lives. We want to live the best life possible. Living, living, living the best life. And for some of us, it's a choice to be single. For some of us, it's not a choice. And then for some of us, we're just doing our own thing and we're, we're doing our isolation in our own way. Yes. We are, we're making the rules <laughs> as we go along. Some of us are, and some of us are abiding by the rules. <laughs> yeah, some of you will know, some of you listening will know exactly what I'm talking about. But we have a great panel this evening. I know that people are still gonna come in a little bit later. Um, but for now, I'm going to introduce our guests and we're going to move on. We're going to just deep dive because we've got two hours. That's it. There's no after party tonight. Normally we have an after party. There's no after party tonight. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, hashtag, just saying no after party tonight. So I am just going to make sure that everything is working well with management. Those of you welcome, welcome, welcome. Those of you who are on the WW dot. Yes, we are streaming through Luton Urban Radio tonight. So I just need to make sure that everything is everything as they say, and it is going through. Right, so can you just making sure everything's all right for you guys on the WW dot. And then I'm going to go and check Facebook and then we're going to just deep dive. Now, guys, the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm streaming from home. All right. I am not in the studio. So I do have to make sure that I dot the I's and cross the T's before we get started. All right. So just making sure so that we're not leaving anyone behind. All right. OK, so let me just do that. I've done that. And now I am here. Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. Fantastic. Yes, yes. Hi, Colin Spaulding. How are you doing? Good to see you here. Good to see you here. Guys are coming in, coming in, coming in. So when you're coming into the Zoom room, can you just make sure that you have yourself on uh, silent? We've got a new person. We've got Chris today. Hello, Chris. Right, I'll, we can say hello in a minute. Right, so guys, I'm gonna let you in, let you in, let you in to say good evening. Right, first of all, um, I'm just gonna go by who's at the top of my screen. Tisha Braid, how are you, my darling? I'm really well, I'm really well, thank you. How are you? I'm wonderful, absolutely yeah. wonderful. Lady in red tonight, yes? You're looking for love. <laughs> I am looking for more than love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tina Turner said, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> yeah. There's other things that are needed. Yeah. And I'm looking. 
<laughs> how are you? Tell us, just tell us who you are and a little bit about what you do. Okay, so I'm Tisha Braid. I am an empowerment coach and I do lots of different things. I have a wedding and events business as well. So I get to see beautiful couples celebrating love practically every day. So it's lovely. So um, yeah, all good. Yeah. Lovely. Fantastic. And I'm gonna go down to the Liberty Coach, Ruth Carter. Good evening. Evening, everyone. How are you, babes? How are you doing? I am wonderful. How are you? Oh, I'm excellent. I'm excellent this evening. Good. Tell us a little bit about you, um, the, the, the Liberty Coach. Tell us a little bit about you. Just a little bit. Well, I work with young people, parents and teachers in school. As you know, it's closed. But I do offer support and guidance and information in regards to parenting and anything to do with behavioural change. In a nutshell. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. And I'm going to move over to the young man in another hat. This is Sir Patrick. Sir pa this is what I'm going to call you from now on, Sir Patrick. Sir Patrick, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you? Uh, been a busy day, you know. It has. You know, doing it a little has. ironing, you know. Okay. A little ironing, little housework. I've been. I know what the ladies, what it's like now. What the ladies think about, uh, you know, they have to do a lot of work, you know, today. In the house, yes. The house, and yesterday doing a lot of work outside the house. Wonderful. So, what, what were you doing outside the house? Um, paint, painting all the fences, ready for the rain that we're going to have. So, cutting the lawns and trimming up everything and making things outside look nice. And then coming in the house today, spending time just working inside the house, doing bits and pieces. So yes, it's been a, quite a quite a day. Quite a day. And 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 Sir Patrick, just tell us a snippet about who you are. Well, I'm Patrick, and I'm a happily married man, as happy as it goes. Good. Uh, been married for what, thirty-seven years. Fantastic. Yeah. And moving on. And yeah, so I'm the prime example of the of the proper man that's out there. <laughs> the proper man. Thank you. Thank man. you. Thank you for, for being here. I do believe we've got Simba Browning, we've got Lara Perini. Oh, Lara Perini's here. Trevor Silver Fox is here. Guys, if I've just put the link into the Facebook group, if you want to come in onto the Zoom room, you can just click the link and it should take you in and so that you can be vocal in how you're feeling. You can answer questions and you can talk your truth on this platform. Okay, so today we are going to still, last week, let me go back to last week. Last week, we kind of skimmed over the language of love. It kind of popped up in conversation. We never really went through it. So today we're going to do something. And what I have done is on my Facebook feed, what I have done is I've actually put a link. Do, do any of our panel members know their love language? So yes, yes. Patrick, do you know your love language? <laughs> Patrick is laughing like, I've been married for 37 years, love. <laughs> but it's good to know. It's good to know. I can't hear you, Patrick. Your mouth is going, okay, you know. Yes, mum, I know it. <laughs> you yes, know it, great. So guys, what I'm going to ask you to do, those of you who are coming in, I am going to challenge you um, to write down write down in the thread what you think your love language is and then i want you to go to the top of the feed and find the link and quickly do it it doesn't take long it only takes a few minutes you, you're not it's not brain surgery you're not learning how to be a surgeon it's just you answering some really simple questions and at the end it will give you your love language and i want to know if there's any surprises for you now love languages are important very very important it kind of tells us about how we like to receive love 
And this kind of, I, I spoke slight, a little bit, who's, uh, guys, um, those of you who keep calling me on, on um, Messenger, can you not call me because I'm on the radio and I'm here live on Facebook. So we can't have that kind of conversation. All right. So if you have a question or you have something to ask, if you put it on the Facebook thread or come into the Zoom room where we can have the dialogue there. We also have a chat room as well. So guys, when you are on silent, if there's something that you want to say, you can always type that into the chat room. So thank you very much, guys. I know that guys want to speak, you want to have a conversation, but you cannot have it today, not now, right? So, and you know, let me just get this. Sorry, guys. It's just as well I've got clothes on as well. That could have been quite awkward. It could, listen, I had a moment this week already with Facebook. I, yes, I was doing a live in the morning and just as well I had on my little, little skirt because I had a top on and I thought I'd finished broadcasting and got up, just got up as you do, went out the room, came back in, went back out, came back in, done a little typing and I'm th I saw the light on I was like is that still on people are writing you're still on live you're still on I said my god if I didn't have on a little skirt it would have been a, a very 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 interesting morning Facebook would have had an eyeful good evening guys there's more people coming into the zoom room good evening good evening good evening Good evening. If you can just put yourself on mute as you come in, and we are going to get started. So, so I'm going to open up. I'm going to go straight to Tisha first because I know that Tisha is an empowerment coach. And so I'm going to go to Tisha. I'm going to have a little conversation. Then I'm going to come into Ruth and Patrick whilst uh, Tony and Karen and the other person don't know the name. Um, get settled in so Tisha hi. so Tisha hi my darling how you doing I'm good how are you yeah yeah I'm good 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 right so your love language yes what what is your love language well interestingly enough I did the uh I went on a link that you uh, gave and oh. my love language has changed oh oh so I did Ooh. my love language. I've got the book out uh, again recently, but I did. I read about love languages. I don't know about ten years ago, I think, something right. like that. And I thought I knew what it was, and I analysed it and like, realised like where it come from. But actually, it seems that I've grown up, <laughs> and the thing that I thought it was does no longer interest me. I need right, more. So what did you think it was? So I thought mine, I noticed you, um, you've got two. I thought mine was gifts and um, that sixth one, what's out there, I can't remember what it is, but um, just knowing someone's there distance. and not in. Yeah, not in. yeah, distance. Yeah, distance one. But um, yeah, that's what I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah, so today I discovered it's something else, actually. Um, was it a surprise? I don't want you to tell me yet. I just want to know, did it surprise you? Yes, very much so. This is this is what I'm talking about. This is what I want. And this is what I expect to happen. Yeah. I got a bit of a surprise today myself mm. doing it on this new one because mm. I did one a few days ago. Yeah. And it gave me the result that I thought I would get. Right. And then it gave like the next what you know you've got to kind of work it out yeah I did it again today but this one that I put on the thread is more specific it right. asks you for your age and and things like that yeah so ask a few more questions and then ask, the questions are the same but they're slightly different right. to the questions okay. I asked answered before mm. and I this even though my main um love language is the same my secondary love language really surprised me really wow. surprised me wow. so it's an interesting thing so tell us tell us what your your primary love language is see if i can get it um i did have it on my i think it was what was, i think it was um the company one i can't remember what that one is now 
Well, let me let me go through the, the, langu yeah. the, the languages of love. <laughs> We've got number one, words of affirmation. Yeah. We've got gifts, acts of service, quality time, physical touch. And number six, the sixth one is distance. Mm -hmm. So that those are the six. Most places you'll find the five, but there is a new, as you mentioned, there is a new one, the sixth one. Um, but that's not actually in the test. Right, no, oh, okay. It's not in the test. There yeah. aren't any tests with the sixth one because it's quite recent. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's still gearing towards the five. Mm. So those are the words of affirmation, gifts, acts of service, quality time, and physical touch, right? Yeah. So why, why, are we, why are we thinking about this? What, what is a, important about us knowing what our love language is? Well, if we're single, and we are looking for love. We want the relationship to work, first and foremost. So it is, it is a really good idea for us as people, individuals, to know mm -hmm. how we like to be loved. Mm -hmm. That way we can have the conversation with the person that we're having the conversations with. Mm -hmm. And I think in many case scenarios, uh, and, and I've done another show, like a chat show, we've had people calling in and saying things about this, is that when you don't know your love language, you don't handle, um, it, it, you can handle the arguments um, in, in a, a non-beneficial way. But if you know what the love language is, then you can give that towards your partner, especially if you know, for instance, if you're, partner's love language is touch and the person is coming to, to towards you and they're touching you and you're telling them I haven't got time to stop touching oh, you know just leave me alone you know that kind of thing they're going to feel rejected yeah. but if you know that that's their language then you can adapt the way your behavior is towards them it doesn't mean that you're going to like to be touched but it just means that you've got more understanding of how they react towards you you're yeah. thinking I only said you know I've just said give me five minutes but actually that person might just want to just touch your hand and that was irritating to you but if you have a little bit more patience and understand that it's not that the person's needy they just want to touch your hand and then once they've touched your hand they go about their business then you're both happy yeah that makes sense yeah definitely yeah it's just been about being mindful of the other person their feelings isn't it yeah I think yeah because yeah. really, really I, I think that we are now at a stage where we're older and um or should I say we're younger younger if we're younger in love. So we want our relationships to work. We want to have the testimony like Sir Patrick says, you know, he's been married for 37 years, 37 years, right? So we want to be able to start clocking up those figures and be happy. Yeah. All right. So thank you for that. So you, what was your, what did you say yours was? No, I didn't say actually. So my new one is quality time. And oh, that's a big one. That's big, isn't it? Yeah. But it, I never, I thought it was um, the sixth one of being distant. So it's completely opposite to what I thought. And uh, so it's really interesting. And then my secondary one is still gifts. Like I used to think that was my top one. But I think it's with age, I've realised, yeah, they can give you all the gifts in the world. But if they're not with you, does it mean? Doesn't mean anything. anything. Doesn't. All right, so we're going to go to Ruth. Thank you for that. We're going to come back. We're going to start exploring and, and really being open and transparent about how we feel about this. Thing. So I'm going to come to Ruth. Ruth, so hey. you, hello, darling. Did you take the test? Yeah, I took my test last week. I'm literally just going through your link now, but it was the same, similar. It mm -hmm. took my age and different details like that. So just going off the top of my head, right, when I, when I did the questionnaire, that gave me like what my lang my love language is like the things that I like to receive, mm -hmm. right? But my own personal love language is physical touch. That's mine. The one that how I express my love to you is through physical touch, and that goes across the board with like my friends, my family, 
Um, anyone knows I'm a huggy person. You know you're gonna get that hug from me. Da, 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 da. If I'm with a partner, with, I'm I'm that touchy person. It's, it, it, there's a touch going on somewhere. It's just some kind of. It, I even do it with my children. Mm -hmm. When I took the test, <laughs> that line. <laughs> My number one <laughs> was acts of service. Right. Now, I went through this with my children because I was telling them about it. I went through it with my daughter, I went through it with my son, so that we could understand me better. Mm -hmm. If you go and wash up the plates, I'm happy. If you take the hoover out and hoover up the floor, I'm happy. You know, and my son's like, oh, is that why you get upset sometimes when I don't do things straight? Yeah. yeah. It is, because acts of service is how I receive love. If you are a gentleman and you're going to be in my space, you will be finding things to fix. You've got to be handy, because that that is how I kind of interpret. The next one for me was quality time. Okay. Which I was a bit surprised at. Now, remember I'm saying this off the top of my head, because I remember the last one was gifts. Mm -hmm. And my daughter was like, how can gifts be the last one? I says, I don't know, because I do like receiving gifts and I do like giving gifts. I've got like an expensive bottle of Prosecco. I've got it from Mother's Day. I can't open it. It's, it, and it's like, my daughter brought it for me. She's like, well, mum, I brought it for you. But I says, it's something that I would share. Mm -hmm. Even though it's a gift for me, I can't sit there and drink a whole bottle of Prosecco on my own. It's something that I would have with, you know, like everyone would be like, oh, well, yeah. well, you know, it's lockdown, can't really do that. But it's something that I would. So that's yeah. what was going to stay in that fridge until we come out of here mm -hmm. so I can have a drink with somebody. So the other two were um, words of affirmations. And what's the other one again? Uh, you got uh, physical touch, which is no. what you Oh, yeah. So, so I think it was um, access service quality time physical touch, words of affirmation, and then gifts. That right. was in my order. And then I'm also the one, I like, um, is it sapo sexual? Oh yeah, the, the, sap, the sap, intelligence sap, one. Yeah, yeah. That gets me every time. Like, if you are secretly intelligent, like you do research, you look into certain things and blah, 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 and I can hold conversations with you on them, yeah that, that i like learning you know me i do research anyway i'm a social yeah. researcher i'm always looking for for something or learning something new whether it's about this planet any planet universal whatever i'm i'm very much on that so those are the things that excite me now you know i kind of started chatting with a gentleman doing the previous challenges yeah, how, how's that going <sighs> So you nearly made me choke that 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 sigh roof. <laughs> it went down the wrong way. Okay, I, tell us. Do you know what it is? It is this is what it is. It's me. It is me. It's not that oh it's me, it's you, that kind of thing. No, it's me. I get bored real quickly, real quickly, and it doesn't take much really for me to kind of, you know, but I gave him the link, see about the love languages so i yeah. said to him i sent him mine in order what's yours all now i don't have it all now i don't see the thing what he said was oh it's promoting the book and this and the other i'm not talking about that oh do you know what this would be good for doing it with your exes and see no that's not what i'm talking about i'm telling you complete it so i know what yours is but you see since it's not done and it's not that i'm um, kind of thing it's just like I know what mine is, mm -hmm. right? and I knew before taking the test what mine was. So it kind of like <sighs> I'm bored now, and I ain't been on the site for a couple of weeks. But it looks like I'll probably, when I get the time, go back on there because I'm just not stimulated. Mm -hmm. I'm not stimulated here. Um, 
and and that's proven to be a little bit of jarring and and, and I'll have to say another thing the ages of the children okay you know, I think that's another thing for me just for where I'm at with mine right so what is it about the ages of the children for you is yours is to, so it's for the other person is that is that what you're yeah, saying yeah 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 I right. think the youngest is 12 so the ages range between 12 and 18 mm -hmm. and there's four of them okay. and I'm like oh god I've got two and they're 20 and 16 and I just you know when you in your mind you you can start seeing things you can start hearing things within your mind and I, my mind just was like Nah, I remember when, when mine were 13, it was hard, and you want to go through that, again? no, if I wanted to do that, I would have had more children to keep doing that, no, I just said no, nah. so I was just like, mm. so that's where I'm at, in all truthness, we still communicate on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but whereas my interest went a few days ago, Right. I thank you for your honesty, Ruth. And this is what this is about. The reason why we're doing this is because many times we say that we want things. We're like children. We say that we want it. And then when we get it, we don't want it because actually it's not what we want. So mm -hmm. if we go through this process as singles and know what we want, when it appears, we will know it. Yeah, it's about us being clear and having clarity about how to move forward. I'm going to go to Patrick next, and we're going to come into Tony, because I can see Tony shaking his finger. So hold that thought, Tony. But I'm going to come to Patrick, because one of the things that I recognise from Patrick over the weeks that we've been doing this is the clarity that he had when he met his wife. It doesn't matter whether it's yesterday, today, or, or, or forever down the road. Clarity is key, guys. Yes, we're single. Yes, we want to have a partner. Yes, we want to have all the romance and all of that. But actually, if we don't know what it is we really want, there is no point in going and picking up somebody's child. Because somebody, the man that you're with, the woman that you're with, is someone's child. Right? And there's been so many relationships that have failed and people are hurting massively we see it all the time we see it online it comes out oh she done this oh she done that oh he done this oh he done that actually we are now taking responsibility for ourselves that's what we're doing and we're making sure that we are clear here first before anything else goes on anywhere else in the body this has to be clear the mindset what do you really want what do you what kind of partner do you really want so i'm going to bring patrick in patrick can i mute yourself hello sir good, good evening ladies and gentlemen <laughs> so yes. patrick you've heard the two ladies talk about their love language and both of them have had surprises right now what is your love language well, the thing is, right, um, mine is gifts, mm -hmm. right? And I found out something else this week. Well, it's it's always been like that anyway. I'm a person, I'm a giver, full stop. It's not just my wife. Mm -hmm. It's not just my wife. It's- um, how do you, Sorry to cut you. How do you like to, how, what is your love language? So how do you like someone to show you that they love you? Well, it's, it's all about, um, be nice really i'd walk down town everybody's nice everybody's smiling at me you know everybody's every, i don't know what's going on everybody's smiling at me some people say to me um i've never seen people like you before when me and my wife walked into, into town they say to us oh i haven't been i haven't seen people like you for a long time and i think i wonder what you're talking about when you say that and they say we're, we're you're you're happy we're happy Wherever we go, we're a happy couple because we, we're just entwining each other. We're just helping each other along. So mm -hmm. we always, that's how it is. But um, she gives me gifts. Mm -hmm. When we first got married, she gave me gifts. This lockdown, right? Mm -hmm. 
I find myself giving people. That's what I do. I give people gifts. So I'll give people food. I come out of my way to give to help people. That's yeah. why. You know? So yesterday um I'm, I'm sorting out the garden and I've got some rhubarb fresh and I cut the rhubarb and wrap it up and give it to a lady across the road, an elderly lady across the road that can cook rhubarb because she'd been doing it for years. I've been giving her rhubarb for years. Mm -hmm. been cooking. And the idea of she, I'm giving her the rhubarb, she cooks a pie for herself and cook one for my wife. So it, it works, mm -hmm. it works. So, you know, even in this lockdown can still be giving gifts in this lockdown. You can, you can. So, you can so, so, yeah, you can, you can still be giving gifts. But my life, my life starting out, was always we, we always helped each other and 37 years coming up to 38 years in august end of august 38 years we're still making each other laugh we if we have a disagreement about something we we don't we don't we don't we don't lie down with that argument right so you make sure that it's sorted out before you go anyway. Go to sleep. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Today she asked me if I can if I can help her with something. And so I said, "What's the thing you want me to help you with?" She said, "Could could you cut my nails, my my fingernails? Because they're long. They're all as long." So I said, "That's okay, girl." And I started to trim her nails and left her to sharpen them up. No, the simple thing that you can help your lady is a simple thing. You know, it's just nice. Wonderful. Thank you for your input. Right, I'm going to jump on to Tony. I'm going to come to Tony, then I'm going to come to Karen, then I'm going to go to Cheryl because Cheryl's just come in the room. So, Tony, good evening, sir. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, two men in hats this week. We've got this hat thing going on. It yes. looks like we're all going to have to come in hats next week. We've got good day to you, sir. Good day. A hat compo going on, yeah. Let's let's. I don't know. I, actually, I've got this is a bit of a hat. <laughs> anyway, anyway, go for it, Tony. Yeah, we're looking for we're, we're looking for opportunity to buy a new hat. Everybody, apparently. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. Anyone who gets married, we're all coming. Oh, mm. Okay. So, so, Tony, did you get a chance to look at the um the link that I put up the love I language? Didn't. No, I didn't. Right. Okay. Uh, so, do you know what your love? Do you think you know what your love language is? Okay, I know what the love languages are. Um, I would say, me personally, I'm a, I'm a bit of everything, but I definitely like touch, and mm -hmm. I definitely like words of affirmation. Okay, you. So you like to receive that. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. Well, touch is both. Touch is a two-way thing. So somebody touching me, me touching somebody, and then words of affirmation. I'm just that kind of guy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So. Well, I did want to uh, very quickly um, respond to Ruth and the yeah, issue of because uh, when I was waving my finger, it was at Ruth. Ah. Okay. And it was in response to her comment about the children which is really always a big problem because when you get to a senior age, you're going to come across that consistently. You're going to have, you know, men who have got children at various ages. Like if you met me today, you know, I've got a 20 year old, I've got a 16 year old and I've got a six year old. At some point in time, that six year old is going to be going through the teenage years, which is hell because I've been through it with two girls already. Mm -hmm. Anyone who comes into my life has to understand that that's going to be part of their life as well at that time. Mm -hmm. Would that stop me from getting involved with a, with a person romantically because they had a child who was going through hell or giving them hell? No, because I totally understand what that child is going through as a person who deals with children all the time. Mm -hmm. um, more so, I understand the pressures it puts on a parent, especially a single parent. A single father is one of the most troubled individuals on the planet. A single black man father is one of the most troubled men on the planet. He has got so much to go through. 
which is why ultimately the struggle is real for us because I'm I am that that single black man father. The struggle is real to find a partner who can be supportive to us through all of our struggles and understand the complexities of being that person in society, which generally doesn't work in your in your benefit and does everything to try and pull you down. And then you've got these children who are growing up into, into certain environments where the system is also trying to pull them down. And then they've got the, 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 the complexity of a system that tries to separate fathers and children. Yeah. So if you find that you can help that guy, do it because trust me, that could be that could be something that works out really dra dramatically well for you. I, I'm just saying, you know, don't don't ro rule off guys just because they got children and just because they're in that teenage group. Okay. Thank you for that, Tony. Are you responded, Ruth? Yeah. Yes, can I respond, please? Okay. I suppose everyone is to their own preference and life in there. <laughs> and I suppose because I work with <clears throat> young people, that's what I do. That's, you know, you've got work, you've got hope. I have to separate the two. I've done the single parent. I'm still a single parent. I have raised my children primarily on my own with one and supported with the other. So I know it's challenges. If I had a choice, would I get back involved in that? The answer is no, no, because it's just too challenging. That's not where I wanna be right now. If they were older or, um, you know, that would be, we would be in the same kind of boat. Um, but like the communication hasn't ended or anything. It's just in my own mind, I'm like, I'm walking. And that's just because of me. Am I any help to someone like that? Probably and maybe probably not because again, it's choice. Um, sometimes we have a lot to deal with as parents and primarily your children come first, not the dating thing. Um, so it's seeing where things go and how they transpire. But I know how I'm feeling. It's making me want to change my list and get a bit more specific on that. So that's my thoughts in response. But thank you, Tony, because yeah. I hear what you're saying. It's absolutely right. You do want the support. Everyone does. And I suppose I was that person that didn't get that res response because some men don't want to be dealing with women who have children. In fact, some of them don't want to have children and they don't want to be bothered with people who have children. But again, that's a preference to that person and what they like. You want someone to bring add value, not to make you feel worse. And you don't want to expose your children to any kind of foolishness, especially with some of the stories I've heard on, on people who are meeting people. You want to make meet the right person. And primarily that's what we all want. So, yeah, those are my few words. Where's Yvonne gone? She's on mute. You're on mute, Yvonne. I have unmute myself, yeah. I started coughing. Um, not anything to do with what's going on in the world. Just having a little tickle in my throat. But um, um, Shalomi, hello, Shalomi, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Shalomi, come in the room, man. Um, Shalomi's left a message and said, for me, I have no tolerance for children anymore. And I don't believe that I have what it takes to for someone with young children. But she says, Tony, I understand where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. But for her personally, she, she doesn't want to be in a relationship with someone with young children. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your opinions, guys. Guys, make sure you put on the thread, you know, get involved in the conversation. I can see a lot of you here. Make sure that you get involved. Right, I'm going to move over to, I'm going to speak to Cheryl now. Cheryl, um, hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm sorry, I'm late. I've been baking. I've been baking. <laughs> did, you bake any, did you bake any bread? I made bread, I made coconut turnovers, and I made a rum cake. Uh, um, you see the rum? <laughs> cake like you're making me scratch my head now can you leave some can you leave it on your doorstep and i'll come pick it up 
I'll make one for you tomorrow. Um, I actually made a rum cake because someone's come to do something for me. So rather than we're bartering. <laughs> All right, I'll find some, I'll find something to do for you, darling. <laughs> All right. No, it's it's really uh, I I caught the end bit about um taking on other people's children. Mm. I, I really do think that people shouldn't um, discount people that have children because you might be blocked with a blessing. Because um, personally, I think a man that um, takes responsibility for his children and is a good father to his children, even if they're offended, is, um, is a man is has the potential to be a great man. Um, I think that the difficulties are that when you think, sorry, I think, I think the difficulties are when you um, have been a single parent, be it man or woman, raising a child, is that the child or children have been a sentence of life for so long that sometimes it's really hard for another person to come in and fit into the mix. And, and when you're in a relationship, I suppose you wasn't sure that you're coming first, not a, a poor second to a child, several children. But I, I do think discounting someone with a child or children is possibly um, missing an opportunity to meet a, a partner. Okay. Well. Okay, thank you for that. Did you do the test? I was trying to do it while you were talking, but I couldn't quite get on to it. All right, we'll come back to you. Yeah, come back to me while I'm talking. Right, what, uh, what do you think you are before you go? What do you think? Um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a mixture of two. I think I, I like active service mm -hmm. from my partner. Yeah, for how you want to be loved. This is how you yeah, want to be loved. Yeah, how I want to be loved. Yeah, so active service and, I, and, and yeah, intelligence. So, you know, I'm, I'm very turned on by yes all right Do, the intelligence isn't in there all right okay because it's it's more a broader um yeah. test but see what do your test and see what you I will do. with i will do okay. all right okay so we're going to come over to karen hi karen how are you i'm going to unmute you mm. right, try, that's it there you go hi. hi i wasn't expecting to have to talk i thought i would just be here Quiet, incognito. That's fine. You go and dash a little thing on my head and don't get worry. background. Don't worry, you are welcome. You are it's welcome. At 10 p.m. thinking it's bedtime. <laughs> and I get dragged into this by Ruth. Thank you very much, Ruth. <laughs> okay, it's good to have you here. You. So, did you do the test of the love languages? Yeah. As soon as I joined and I realized you were actually going to be asking people, I just thought I'd quickly do mine. I had, I was familiar with the concept before and I've done it sometimes before. Mm -hmm. So I did it again. Okay. Yes. What were you before? Can you remember? I can't actually remember. It's probably, last time I took it was probably about a year ago, mm -hmm. but I do think there's been a shift in my percentages, if anything, mm -hmm. even if my things haven't moved, I think my percentages have shifted a bit. Okay. Um, a part of it is because I'm in a relationship and I'm maybe feeding off of their love languages. Mm -hmm. And a part of it might be just there. Uh, as Tishia said, probably just growing up a bit and just, you know, other things become more important, especially in this time. So maybe my coronavirus lockdown love languages are different to my, you know, when I'm out and about. Right. So again, when things get back to norm, a little bit more normality, I think. Okay, so what's your love language? What's your first love language? My first one, I'm just going back to so get my percentages correct, is physical touch. Okay. And as I said, it could be because no one's touching you. <laughs> so did, was that a surprise to you? Yeah, it was a surprise that physical touch was, was so high. As I said, I'm not sure if it was there before or if it was acts of service. Because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm a kind of an acts of service kind of person, stroke gifts. Mm -hmm. So I'm not really sure why physical touch. I do still I like physical touch. So mine are, mine are pretty much, you know, even across the board. Mm -hmm. um, but physical touch may be up there because, you know, 
I'm home alone pretty much. So yeah, maybe that's something I'm really craving at the moment. Okay. What was your second love language? My second love language was, um, I think probably quality time. No. Right. So physical touch is like quality time. No, sorry. Physical touch. And my second one was acts of service. Right. So yet again, having someone present, being with me, being very physically present. So, um, yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I just say a little something about the kids? Yes, you can. I think, uh, sorry, Ruth and um, Tony had two slightly different issues that they were referring to. And I think with Ruth, she was saying that she was she was already past a certain stage and she didn't really want to go back. Mm -hmm. While Tony still had to go through that stage again. Mm -hmm. So maybe he is a bit more, you know, open to that kind of relationship. While Ruth is like, I've been there, I don't really want to go back. So I don't think she was saying she wouldn't go with someone with kids full stop. It's just the ages of the children. Like me, my two children are 10 and 14. And I wouldn't want to go with someone who's necessarily who's got children who's six, because then that's kind of like a real teaching time, behavioral teaching time. Mm -hmm. And I don't really the way how I teach my kids, it can, can seem quite different to how other people teach their kids. Mm -hmm. So it would be very like tentative, I think. Thank you. And that's true. Thank you for that. Now, we never really kind of looked at the children because we're looking at dating, but actually it's yeah. really important that we we have this mindset and be open enough do we really do we want to date somebody with children you know or, or not and and it's not wrong and it's not right there's no wrong or right it's your choice it's your preference but these things are things that do we really sit down and think oh you know when we meet someone what what happens is we meet somebody and then we say oh he's and he says, oh, I've got kids. And then you go, oh, OK. And then it's like, yeah, you can meet my kids. Oh, OK. And then you go to your friends and then you're saying, I'm not sure I want to meet his kids or oh, I'm really excited to meet his kids. Or it just depends on where you're at in your life. But it's a big thing because it can make or break a relationship. And I think you need to know, you really need to know whether or not that's something that you're willing to invest in. Because we know when we're going into a relationship, it's an investment. It's an investment. And that's why so many people, when they do come out of a relationship, that's why the bitterness comes. That's why the arguments come. It's because people feel like they've made all this investment they've done all this they've been this person this all this length of time and they've got nothing to show for it so i think it's really important and you guys can you know come in and tell me if you think that's right or wrong but i think it's really important that you kind of start to think about um this if that's what you want i know for me personally my children are all grown my children are all over the age of 20. my youngest is 21. So, you know, I'm not saying that I couldn't fall in love with a man who has a five year old, a three year old. But to be honest with you, I'm not looking to be to play that role again. My kids are, are grown. So I want to be with somebody that can just I'm go. Let's go. Let's go to Jamaica. Let's go to Barbados. Let's let's go to China. No, not China. Let's go to somewhere in the world. Do you get what I mean? At a drop of a hat but when you have young children it's a little bit difficult and you know there's more challenges there because especially if the child lives with you so for me um it wouldn't be something that would be my first choice i'm just saying that that's me. and that's purely because my kids are older the teacher come in yeah I, okay I, let I, me just I, sorry can i just say in response to that so so i'm a young man who has a six-year-old child but i live alone yeah. 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 I go on holidays on my own all the time mm -hmm. because I have a good relationship th with my children's mother that allows me to be able to say, right, I'm going away for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I have a work situation that allows me to say, right, I'm going away for a couple of weeks. So what I'm saying is don't always write people off just because your book says stay clear of men with with children because men with children don't necessarily mean that 
you know, they don't have independence. Yeah, mm -hmm. I could potentially have my child five, I, like right now, my, my son's mother is a nurse. So I have my son five days a week. Okay. Yeah, but that's not the way it is normally. Mm -hmm. Normally I have it every other weekend. So I have a lot of time. Yeah, I choose whether, you know, to have him for three days, four days, or whether to have him to one day or two days. So it's just, you have to, you, you need to chat to the person that you're speaking to more in depthly to understand that person. Because if you had to make that assumption with me and said, well, oh, he's got a six year old, I can't get involved with him because he's going to have his kids all, all the time, then you've made a really bad mistake. Because I travel more than most people in the world. I have been to more countries in the world than most people have had hot dinners. Really? That is the truth. Okay. Travel is my number one thing. I have been to like, if I was to tell you, I've been to probably more than 40 states in America. Mm -hmm. Most people haven't been to 40 countries around the world. Yeah. I think I'm can thinking, I just butt in? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I brought up this children thing, and it kind of sounds like it's going a little south and north and whatever <laughs> not of you. And I, when I made my comment, it did not make it to offend anybody. I've got to say that first, right? And everybody has their own preferences, right? I, you know, I've made my list of the things that I've want, and children being on the list is not an issue. It's the ages of where my children are. And because they're at that stage of going into the independent, the adolescence independent stage in life, my whole parenting is changing to meet them where they are at. If, you know, going back to the primary school years of parenting, you know, it's kind of like if you're in a relationship with someone, I'm sure you want someone to be involved or you're going to talk about certain things. I don't, need a, I don't need a mother to my pressure. child. Pardon? My child has a mother. I don't need a mother to my child. No, it's not saying that you need a mother for your child. I'm not talking about you personally. I'm saying generally, talking generalisation. It's just that as adults, we are role models. So... Our children sees us with one person, then they see us with another person, then they see us with another person. It does shape the way that they think about relationships subconsciously, whether we like to think of it, yes or no. So yes, you have your parents involved, but the parents are not together. And then each parent wants to start dating. The children will become aware of that at some point. Some people can do it where no one doesn't know, and it's their children just grow up seeing the parents and yep. no one's outward influences. Yeah. As they get older, they start to clock on and kind of recognize, oh, you're going out a lot. Oh, I didn't see you this weekend. Well, what was you up to? Do we not be open and transparent with our children and let them know, you know, mum and daddy not together, but mum is seeing someone, daddy's seeing someone. These are conversations that happen along the line whether you discuss it with your six-year-old or your 10-year-old or 14-year-old or 16 or 18, at some given point, they're going to be reflecting on how we as parents present our relationships. Yeah, but you, you, the way you said it is like it's relationships. It's not. You're, you know, all you're talking about is like basically introducing a person at a specific point in time. Now, if I meet somebody that person's probably not going to get introduced to my son or my two daughters for at least six months. Because six months is a kind of period I think that is a reasonable amount of time for me to develop, to develop an understanding of that person and whether or not that person is ready to play a role in the future of my kid's life in terms of saying, right, well, this is the person I've met. I enjoy keeping company with this person. So occasionally when we go to functions, you might see this person. Like, I might decide to go, you know what? This person can come along to, with, with me to a family function. Because we are family people, are we not? And at one point in time, you're going to say, well, all right, the person I've been seeing for six months or 12 months, I'm now ready to present them as my other half at a family function. 
but you ain't going to make that decision willy-nilly. So at the same point you make that decision about your family, the same thing applies to your children. So if, you're the, if, you, if you worry, well, my children are going to be affected by bringing three, four, five men into my house, well, quite clearly you're making wrong decisions because we don't introduce a bag of man in our house into our children or our family. But some people do. Yeah. Not saying I do, because I don't, but some people do. Some people do. And then, can I just interject here? What you have to also remember is, is that because it is a big melting pot of people and, and emotions and feelings, and what, what we don't tend to think about is what if the child doesn't like the person that you have met what then and this person that that you're with don't like the child neither because this happens we have to start thinking openly or, and i can tell you this from my own experience as a child not even as an adult as a child so you go and you meet this person you're with this person and you you introduce this person after the fact after the fact you're all loved up this is your partner and then you introduce the partner to the child the child the partner doesn't like the child and the child don't like the partner then what do you do my thing is here you everybody has a choice in life everybody especially when we become adults and when we are single people we are we are now like us we're of the age from 40 upwards i'm gonna say without any offending anybody I don't want to offend anybody who might be 38 or for 35 right but we're going that way up right and so when children when you, we as people start to think about what do we want we have to be honest and clear. And it's not about cutting anybody off. It's about making a decision about what you really, really, really want. And so in my heart, in my mind, in my mind, I'm looking at my life, my life. I could, I could be with somebody, I could meet a man whose wife just had a child and passed away look at the where we're living now we're living in this in these times where we've heard of women dying and and just giving birth so i could meet a man today and i've got to ask myself the question do i want to be in a position where i am raising a child and there's nothing wrong with me saying actually no and there's nothing wrong with me saying yes because the choice is mine because I have to live with that as does anybody else. So what I want us to do is not to take anything personally, but I want us to start thinking, what do we really want? Let's be honest. Let us be honest because it's, I tell you what, you I pick up a man and I like him, but his child don't like me. I don't like the child and this could, and I'm not saying that I wouldn't like the child, but it could happen, right? And then, we're living in a, in a relationship where the, the child and the step parent, for instance, don't like each other. What is the point of that? And who does that help? That doesn't help the child and it doesn't help the parent either. It doesn't help, no one wins. So we have to be honest. And we have to really take off the mask, really go behind the black curtain and start really being honest with ourselves, man. That's what I think, because if we don't, that's why we're having so many relationships that break down. And then you find out the reasons after the fact and the people who get hurt the most are the children. And I say that because I was that child. So that's just me giving a, 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 a brief, like, like snippet of my life of I've lived that. Tisha, come in. Oh yeah, um, yeah, really good conversation. So um, yeah, I've got an older child again. So my preference is to date someone without one because my core value is freedom and I want to be able to travel and I've done all the hard work already as a single parent, she's 20. So literally I've done all the hard work, but then actually thinking if I did meet someone who was my age, didn't have children and posed that question about having kids together, then I would look at that. 
in a committed relationship. So I would potentially start again with the support of my partner. So yeah, that's another twist on it really. But Ooh. I would wanna, yeah, why start again? Yeah, when I've done 50, like a six year old or something, when I've done what, 15 years of it already. But you would but, have a child with somebody, you would think about that. Yeah, potentially. That's, yeah. Uh, yes. Wow. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> I'm saying, well, because if you was here two weeks, was it three weeks ago, maybe, Tony, I was saying that I was actually approached by somebody who was a little bit younger than me, who didn't have children. And children was a thing. Yeah. Children was a massive thing for him. He wanted children. Yeah. But I knew in my heart I didn't. Yeah. And to be perfectly and, and honest, the time for me to have children is not no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's 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 clear, you know, there, there's age which needs to be considered. And obviously I'm a 50-year-old man, so you know, I'm not looking at a 35-year-old woman. I just, you know, I know women of 30s are looking man for children. So I don't, you know, that's my, that's my, um, my sort of deal breaker. You've got to be over 40 and you've got to have like already put yourself on the, on the road with your children if you wanted to have them. Um, Question for you, Tony. Go ahead. 40 years old, she's got no children and she wants children. Would you be up for it? I can't, I'm done. I've had the snip. You can have it reversed though. I'm not doing it. I don't want to go under the knife two times. <laughs> but is that not the deal breaker? It's the same thing. You said deal breaker before. I wanted to pick that up anyway. Yeah. So, so my deal breaker was there, wasn't it? It's not. You've you've got your children, yeah, and you're now senior. So you've lived your life. You're not exploring life. You've lived your life, and you're now in a position to say, I now know what I want in a man, which is what I feel generally should be the have the situation with a woman when she's hit. 40 you know you should you should know what you want in life you know we're all looking for security mm -hmm. you know well security can work both ways not just the man to offer security the woman should offer security you know i don't want a woman who's lost and is looking for you know salvation and doesn't know where to find it i want someone who's grounded a bit worldly like myself and understands that the joys of traveling are so vast that, you know what, if you get with me, you're gonna be traveling, guaranteed. Okay, lovely, right. I'm gonna bring in Shalomi, because Shalomi hasn't had the chance to say hello. Good evening, hello. my darling, how you do? Let's bring you in. How are you, Shalomi? Well, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. More than good. And um, back to Tony and, and children. I think it's an individual thing, you know, Tony, to be honest, because for myself, I have four kids, 26, 24, 18, and 14. And when they were young, nobody want me with them bugger kids. Like, nobody was interested. So I did the single thing all on my own, and now they're, like, doing their own thing and some are grown up. It's like... I don't know if I could do the kid thing. Not even the weekend stuff, like, because my kids are bad breed. There's no pretty word about it. They say the weirdest things. They're, some of the weirdest things come from the mouth and I'm the mom. And sometimes I feel like punching them over. And if somebody child should say, even for a week, because if you're gonna be with somebody in a proper relationship, it's unfair to say the kid can't be weekend off, weekend on or holidays or whatever it is. It's unfair, you're not being their mom, but you're gonna be, for me, a stepdad is a dad that step up, right? So you're gonna step up in times where, whenever, a mother, she's gonna step up. You're not the mother, you're not looking a mother, but she's gonna step up. So to be honest, it's honesty is the best policy, because. Like me, I would I tell my kids some stuff and I will tell my stepchild the same thing. And people make my kids are all right because that's mommy, but tell another person might go to the mom and said, Oh, she said this, and you understand. So I think honesty, honesty is the best policy when it comes to the young kids. And I can't do the young kids. I don't like that. I don't know. I've Should been I single for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm gonna say single, single, no sex, nothing, not even kiss. I haven't got in all them times, okay. right? And um, 
I don't know. I've reached a point in life where people my age, they're having young babies and I don't know. It's a bit tricky. So again, in response to that, Shalomi, and, and, and I, respect you, I respect what you've just said, you know, listen, raising four children as a single mother is not easy. Um, but my own feeling is I would have no trepidation walking into a relationship with a woman who's got four children because you, you, you're mature enough to know your children. You're mature enough to know yourself, yeah? And so long as you've got, you know, you're not, you're not like a, a bunny boiler and you're not like one of them people that, are, you know, a little bit stir crazy at the drop of a hat, you're gonna you know, like fly off the handle then I'd have no problem in, in you know, negotiating, trying to form a relationship with a person like yourself, because ultimately this is the, this is the key. I'm trying to work with a person. I'm not trying to work with their kids. I'm trying to work with a person initially. Yeah. I have three children of my own, as I said, 20, 16 and six. The person who's coming into my life, I'm not expecting them to drop and, and start, um, mothering my children I'm trying to develop a one-to-one -one first and foremost let's not let's not you know let's not um, fool around and say you know look me and you are guaranteed to work out it's no guarantees in life so what we must do is first and foremost say okay I understand your situation it doesn't fill me with trepidation if I see that you've got four children even if you say you've got four bad boys guess what I'm a member of this organization behind me called the 100 Black Men of London. I mentor children of that ilk day in and day out. I'm on the phone to children day in and day out. I've got three children at the moment that I'm mentoring who have been involved in stabbings. Yeah, that's what I'm about. That's my life is about trying to rescue and help children who've gone through difficult times and are having problems in their society and in, where in their situation that they're in at the moment. I have no fear of dealing with that because I deal with the parents of those children all the time, okay? My situation myself is nowhere close to that, but I'm, ha I'm, I'm willing and open to working with a woman in my life to be able to say, you know what, if you've got children, I'm not gonna worry about that. The most important thing is me and you, because if me and you can work, then we'll find a way around the children. But what are you looking for? Are you looking for a type of relationship just to hook up, get up, travel, bang on? Or are you looking for marriage? Because I realize I'm looking for marriage. I don't fornicate nor commit adultery. And that's why I haven't had sex for so long. Because okay. I realize um, for most what I've seen, sex is, is the foundation of Every relationship, every man I try talking to, I say hi. You always say like, and I'm 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 like that turned me off. So, um, what are you looking for? Are you looking for somebody to get to get along within six, three months, or whatever it is now? Have sex and travel, have sex, or, or are you looking for a committed marriage? Or are you looking for marriage? Because everybody. Okay, so. If, you know, at the end of the day, you need to find out what you want and what that person wants. If you're a person that doesn't want to have sex until marriage, then the person you're going to meet has to have the same values. Yeah. For me, I've been married twice. So again, I've got that experience. I've been married twice. I've got three children with two mothers. So I've got, there's no fears for me. Should I... Should, I don't, I don't, I don't write marriage off completely. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very vocal on my opinion on marriage. But you're not looking for marriage, like you're not. That's not where it's, your head is. It's, it's not the be all and end all. It's not important. I'm 50 years old. Yeah, if I'm gonna marry you, I'm probably gonna marry you in 10 years time. Because I wanna see, I wanna see 10 years of like you know commitment. What, what are you? Wait, wait, wait. I see the whole room went up in uproar there. So I'm gonna be banging you for 10 years or like, banging you, open to, I'm single, all right. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Oh. <laughs> no, no, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, I get it. It's just that I'm not, it's, it's me. It's, you know, it's not every man. I'm not, 
I'm not, I can't champion every man, but all I can say is in the, in the process of looking for a man, there are certain things that some people are saying in the room that make me say, don't write off this particular man just because he's got children. Don't write off this man because he's gone married twice and whatever. Don't write off this man because he's got a child of six. Don't write off this man because sometimes that man can be a, a, a wonderful person. Yeah, I like to think of myself as that. Uh, you're on um, mute to share. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm not doubting that. They can be a gorgeous man, but it's just not, you're just not, maybe not suited, not in the same stage of life. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah, they're probably an amazing guy. But mm -hmm. Yeah, the dynamics will be different. Yeah. Totally agree with you. Totally agree. With you. And it is horses for courses. Every, every listen, we, we we started this conversation talking about the language of love. Yeah, we're coming back to you know, that. That 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 is very important because quite clearly, you know, for Shaloni, your language of love is different to my language of love. So whereas touch and feel, which includes sex, is important, it's not at all important for you. And whereas Building a relationship can take a long time for me. It's probably not going to be that, that same length of time for you. So yeah, okay, I mentioned 10 years. It might be three years, but I'm not, I'm not committed to marriage in, an, in a short period of time. All right, Shalomi, can I just ask you, did you do the um, love language test? No, what was what is that? Because I've never right. ever heard of what a love language test. Right, go in the thread in the chat room. I've put the link in there and just, it only takes about three minutes. It doesn't take long. And what do you think that your love language is? How do you like to be loved? Where are you gone? Shalomi. <laughs> <laughs> how do you like, how do you, what do you think your love language is? Um, I'm going to be blunt and honest. This is the first time I've ever heard about love language. I didn't even know that love of a language. I'm going to be honest. Okay. I'm going to be honest. Right. Yeah, and... As I said, I've been out this playing field for so long. When I was in it, all I did was cheat, do my thing. I've never been loyal or faithful before. So it is like I just get on with it and did like a um, couple of years ago, like 14 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, I've never really been in a committed relationship. Like never, like okay. I've cheated on everybody. I've had one, two and three at a time. So I'm going to be honest. Uh -huh. I've just now know the value of me and relationship and all of that. And I've had, had a chance to try it out. So I, in my head, I've built up a whole man of whole relationship. I don't know if I'm going to find him in reality. Okay, so, so what I want you to do, go into the chat. There is a link of love, love languages. Click on the link and it will take you to... Um, uh, like a video kind of thing and it's going to bring up some questions for you and just answer them as it's just two two questions um on each side choose which one and at the end of it it will t it will tell it. you what I your can't. love language is i can't see it right so have you seen in the in the chat i see the chat but i see no link all right what i'm going to do is i'm going to go in the chat and i'm going to send it to you directly i'm going to come to, back to cheryl cheryl what's your love language did you find out i do it was um, primary acts of service. yeah yeah it was primary acts of service but um i just wanted to just kind of make the relationship i hear tony i hear him and i hear other people I mean, I can only tell you that um, I do okay. had a... Um, Just wrong with your microphone, you know. Yeah, the reason is, is that better? Keep is that better? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I too, before I met my husband, I had this idea of what I thought I wanted and my husband was actually totally the opposite of what I thought was... Um, the type of person I would end up with. And because we were both of an age, when we met, we were engaged, I think within six months. Six months? Within six months. We were married. We would have been married in a year, but mum mama, mama asked us to wait for another year. Actually, yeah, wait for a full year. 
go off for you. And it was the best thing I've ever done in my life. You know, I lost him because he got ill. But I, I, I do think that we should be careful in, in ourselves and saying and being open to, to something that may be great. And there's probably something that saying that you don't want children, you don't want man kids, or you don't want a woman with kids, blah, 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 is is um, and possibly a chance that something really real. As long as you and that person um, have a strong understanding and, and thinking and talk about what you expect from life, about parenting, um, how how that person parent if it falls in life parent then it makes it makes a feel a different that, that that's all I would add. But yeah my, my language would appear is mainly uh, followed followed by gifts and affirmation but but way down. Okay. Right I was just trying to work out why your sound because I have got a friend of mine who is um, helping me technically. Okay. <laughs> He's like saying, um, so I just made sure that everybody was um, switched off just to make sure that it wasn't um, your, your, the sound from this side. Right. right, so we've got some interesting, right, so we've got some, th some interesting things here. Right, so Carol Carol uh, Lorraine says, it, so it, I think it's going back to what Tony was saying. She's saying it depends. The relationship has to flow before children are introduced. Mm -hmm. oh, that's what she said. Um, but um, we had a message from uh, um, Mark. Where is it? Where did, where's it gone? It says something about if you're technical, you have to take the calf. Something like that. That's what he said. <laughs> Old times West Indian saying. Right? Right. So, guys, all the mics are muted apart from mine. So, I will even mute my mic because what I've been told is that everyone needs to mute when others are speaking. It may help. So, uh, just so from the Facebook side, that we're getting some feedback. So, that's just to let you know. Um, and, and also headphones would be helpful. Um, but if anyone, I don't have my headphones. And I'm, I'm, yeah, I don't have my headphones here. They're somewhere, they're downstairs. So, okay. So Nicola Kelly Swan said, I've been watching your Zoom. It's been very interesting the, hearing the thoughts that we have here. Um, but most of it, oh, Lauren saying, I love how Shalomi is so real about it. Thank you, Shalomi. Now, Shalomi, I know you were finding it difficult to get the, um, the link. So you need to copy the link in the chat, put it onto your browser, and then put that on the browser, press return, and then it will come up, the, the thing will come up, and then you can do the test. All right, just just to help to help us along because and I just want to welcome everybody that's watching us on Facebook. Um, and, you know, guys, look, you know, do do um, get involved. Those of you who are on Facebook, do get involved. Do put your please. Can you stop calling me? Um, I know that you are on Facebook and you're calling me on Messenger, but I cannot take your call because I am doing a live show. OK, those of you who are on the WW, I want to welcome you and hopefully and hope that you guys are having a lovely time. Right. Um, and uh, finding this interesting, if you have any questions, please uh, put it on. Uh, you can contact us via Facebook, or you can email me info at yvonnemichelle.com and I will get those um, questions that you have. All right. Come in, Patrick. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I, hear, I hear what everyone's talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. The thing is, the thing is, um, if I, I, ha I hear what you say. I hear what you all say, but if I 
fall in love with a lady and she had four children, right? I would, I would take her and the children. The thing is, it's happened in the past and I know men that have done it. They never had any children, these men, and they fell in love with the lady. She then said that she had um, five children and he actually took her with the five children and raised them as his own. So it's, it has happened like that, you know? Everybody seemed to have the same thing. They don't want to, it's too much asshole maybe to take on that. You don't want to start again. But if you if you fall in love with a man, what are you going to do? If you fall in love, head over heels. He's a man in every area you want him to be. He's the man. And he just happens to have um, three children and you've got three children. You don't want to start again, no. But together, that's where the love is. Together, you can do it because it's love. It's not, it's not that you, you're thinking, you fall over that you you're gonna fall over this man. Tony's gonna to fall over the woman. The woman's got three children. He's got three children. What's he gonna do? Of course he's going to he's going to do what he has to do to make that work. It's gonna work. We've got to think. We've got to think positive here. It's gonna work. You're not gonna think that um it ain't gonna work because it ain't gonna work. This man took up five kids, and all those kids they might not even like him. Because some of them kids never liked him. But it never made a difference. The lady, she fell in love with this man. You know, you've got to, you've got to think of it that way. You can't think of it any negative. You can't have no negative. Otherwise, don't bother. Don't bother. I hear the lady say there that she got four children. She wait. She might not wait. Mar marrying a person, it just, it's not two weeks. It took me... It took me like five years. And I actually went out with her for five. I never lived with her, but I, I never lived with my wife. I, 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 um, I went out with her for five years until my parents found out I ended up marrying her. I was marrying her then, you know? But at the end of the day, if she had three children and I had five, I still would have married her. We'd have to work it out together. How are we gonna, how are we gonna do that? Remember ladies, you're not on your own. The man is there. To help you you're not on your own so whenever like our tony's a good traveler sooner or later you'll have to slow down a bit wait for the children look after the children whatever and then move and then you, you all go together i know a family right now she's got three children he's got two children uh -huh. and they all moved into the same house she got she married this guy uh -huh. she married a guy and she's still married to him she married the guy and her children and his children, they're living all in the same house. They've got one big nine bedroom house. Mm -hmm. And they got all cut now. All these kids are grown up and they've got about nine cars on a driveway now. But they all work together. I never, I never heard of him saying that they don't. They're traveling over the world and the kids them are still doing their thing. Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, we've got to think. You've got to think here. If you fall in love with a man and he's got, that's what his baggage is, so be it. It's love. Love is blind. Marriage is a high opener. <laughs> okay. Love is blind. Marriage is an eye opener. Karen, come in. And then Tony will come in after. Oh, no. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So I was going to say that Mr. Patrick reminded me of something that I've learned quite a while ago. And it's this. Um, we tend to open our eyes and be on the lookout for all these little what we call things that just aren't right or imperfections. But what's very important is, yes, we have our <laughs> eyes open, but we must also open our hearts. And when you get to a stage where you open your heart, you have so much more things which you will accept. And Mr. Patrick is right. Suppose, and I've got a friend who's got a long list of what her perfect man is supposed to have. And she's so stuck on this long list, but she's close hearted and that list has closed her heart. And that's why, you know, still and forever and a day she's single because she's looking for Mr. Perfect and her heart's closed. But for me personally, when I actually open my heart is when I've got someone who would have never made my list five years ago, would have never even thought about it. You know, all now I'm in a long distance relationship. The guy doesn't even live in this country. That's how crazy 
love can be when you open your heart. And yes, I did say that I personally, you know, you, you're talking about yourself where you are right now. I wouldn't want to go with someone who's got a small child. But then I think about the partner I have. If he had a child that's two years old, would I want to be close hearted to that possibility of making a life with, with this person? And I could say, actually, if I think about it like that, I still wouldn't want to reject him because he's had something that I didn't think was ideal. So that's the difference with having your eyes open because you don't want anyone to fool you, but then also being open hearted. And that's very important. And to be open hearted, it takes a lot because a lot of us have got real chains around our heart or we've got barricades. We've, we ourselves have taken planks and put nails into our hearts and making sure that we are so protected that we don't actually see the goodness in other people because we've got all these lists that we're trying to have the perfect this and the person must do this and do that, that we discount people who might actually work for us. So Mr. Patrick, thanks for reminding me about that. Yeah, great, great points, Karen. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm gonna back you 110% on that because you know, that is for me the, the important element is, you know, don't just judge that. This is why online dating fails because we're judging people just on the content of a few lines of text and a picture. And you're like, oh, he smokes. Oh, you know, I'm, and yeah, I will not go out with a woman who, 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 whose first picture is her kissing a dog because I'm not a dog person. Yeah, we've been through this several weeks on a trot, but. Ultimately, I'm never going to fall in love with a woman who likes dogs that much that she's willing to put the dog as her number one picture with her all on its own. I'm just not dog people. But, you know, listen, um, we all have our deal breakers and we all have our qualms and our wants and our wishes. But it'd be like saying, listen, if a guy came up and he was drop dead gorgeous, got a couple of kids, but guess what? He just came out of jail 10 years ago and he'd done a 10 year stretch, but he's been out for 10 years. Are you gonna turn your nose up and say, nah, nah, he's, he's bad, he's bad breed because he's done time. Because I tell you what, my father was in jail and my father was for 40 years in my life, was the greatest man I ever, I ever knew. Because, and, and he'd, be, he'd done his time before I was born. And it wasn't anything malicious, just, it just, you know, ran into the wrong people, whatever. But ultimately, the, some, if in this day and age, some people get judged on certain things that happened before. Oh, he's had two marriages. Oh, he's clearly not marriage material because he doesn't know what to do with a wife. Well, that's your loss. If that's what, the way you feel, that's your loss, potentially. Unmute, unmute, unmute. Yeah, can I come in there? Because I just want to say this is a really key thing. Um, as we are older ones, what we have to remember is, is that even with our past partners, all right, and this is something that I've learned on the way, even with people, people, we've been through lots and lots of different circumstances and people do things at different times in their lives. And a lot of the time what we do as human beings is if someone does us an injustice or say it's the father of the children whatever we judge that person that person may have done that thing in 19 let's say in 1999 and now we are now in 2020 so that's a long time ago but we judge them on the thing that they did in 1999 and don't recognize that there's been many, 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 many years for them to grow as we have. And, and it's a lesson that I've had to learn. And it's, it's, a, it's not even like a, an old lesson, it's a recent lesson really that I've had to learn that, that, you know, they say lepers don't change their spots. I'm not saying that people change, but what I'm saying is people grow and they evolve. And so we, we have to, get to a place in our lives where we, we don't judge that person based on what they did in 19 long time and actually try and see if they've actually grown and developed 
as they've gone along the way. And that was just really kind of just to, to, to kind of back what Tony was saying to a degree. I think that many of us have been guilty. I can put my hands up and say that I have been guilty of this in, in, in the past where I've said, you know, this person has done this and he done that. And it happened 10 years ago. And we've not seen each other, but yet still 10 years after, I'm like, and he said, you're right, and I'm, hmm, I'm because he done that. But actually, in that 10 years, a lot of growth would have taken place. And that doesn't mean to say that person is the same person that they were 10 years ago. So I'm not saying you must be friends with them, but I think our, our minds have to be a bit more open. Just as Karen was like saying, the heart has to be open. Our minds have to be open. Um, Carol Lorraine has said, my heart is open to love. We are not perfect. It's about trial and error. Work together, work as a partnership, work as one which is and I think this is actually interesting because this has actually come out of love languages from a statement that was made and the, the, the conversation has just gone here but I think it's because maybe this is a subject that we don't really talk about and really it's something that needs to be discussed because if we are going to be looking at relationships if we are going to be building better communication with one another we're looking for that partner we have to understand everything and I think sometimes we just go into relationships looking at that person. Yeah, I, mean, I like that person. So that person says nice things. We're going to be together. I'm going to try it. But actually, it's, it is fundamentally about you, one, knowing who you are as a person. And two, what your likes are, dislikes. Three, being open to others, others and their situations. And four, just being a bit more relaxed about our being single. You know, there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there who are looking for love. The dating sites prove that, but it's how we go about finding it and what type of person we want to be with. We've got somebody else joining in the room. So, you know, it's just really to, I just have to make sure that I'm keeping an eye on the time. We are actually, hi, um, is it Anna Marie? Henry, hi, welcome. Um, we have half an hour left, guys. So, Shalomi, did you do the test? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Test. <laughs> right. yes. You, yes, did I did it. It said quality, the main language is quality time. But, right. Okay, so you want you like someone to spend time with you, good quality one-on-one oh, yeah. -on -one time. Yeah, so I'm that, a new person. So that would mean that if you met somebody that 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 worked away, is is that relationship? These are the things. Is that going to work for you? No, is no, because because as I said, um, been single for so long. The kids doing their own thing. I have one little one. I don't even take her on holiday unless it's her holiday. I do things by myself now. So I'm looking somebody to spend me time. It's just me and they understand. Just me and them mostly as i said my kids my boys they're doing their own thing my daughter is not interested in doing the little one now you understand so it would just be for me i'm looking somebody for me so if he's working um far away no and if i'm working night and he's working day no you understand because as i said I, I i this is the first time if it ever happens I'm gonna know even what a relationship is. All right, so let's change that language right there. So not if it happens, it's when it happens. Okay, when it happens, okay. right? Mm -hmm. I've, I've never been committed to someone. So I'm doing something new, which is scary. Mm -hmm. And I think to myself, Shalom, will you be able to manage this? Cause you're a bit of a bad bro. But I'm willing to give my haul. And that is what I'm afraid of. I'm loyal now. I don't cheat and I'm used to cheating. And I like I don't cheat no more. Mm -hmm. So I'm going on a play field that I haven't been before. You understand? This honesty and loyalty and that is a bit scary. And I'm a bit of a violent person. And I don't know how much violent will come out to me if somebody mess about with me. So you understand, I'm just being honest, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll be honest and say that you've got a bit of a bad temper. Um, yeah. 
and and you would want somebody to be honest with you and to treat you honest way. yes yeah. to be honest and is ready to say you know what i've done the play about i've done everything and this is it not not saying everything will work out the way but to say you know what we're gonna work at it even when because to me I believe sometimes you fall out of love, you have to wait on to fall back in love. So I believe it's a process. I don't believe in the happily ever after. I'm going to cuss, I'm going to scream, I'm going to make up, right? That's so, as I said, I've never been honest in a relationship, right? And this is my first honest relationship that I'm going to go in. And it's a bit scary to think, really, I'm going to give somebody me and all of me. So I don't know. I well, this, know, is why, this is why we're here. We're here to, to walk with you and support you through that because it's, as you said, it's scary. And if it's something, we all know, if it's something that you've never done before, then sometimes you, we need that support. So we're here I've to support never, you. I've never been in love and I've never been love. And that, that sounds weird to some people, but mm -hmm. I guess I was just an adventurous person. But then I get the chance... I don't want to fall in love. I want to stand in love, just in case I have to walk out. My idea, I don't know. I just have some crazy ideas, oh. to be honest. So, oh. <laughs> right, okay. so you know, can I say something on this yeah, one? Yeah, go for it, Tony. So, Shalomi, it sounds yeah. like you need, you need, you need a mentor. A, a mentor to what? Mentor me through love. Exactly, because okay. you, listen, uh, well, you know what. It's like mentoring has become a new thing. It's, it's, it's a really big thing now. A lot of guys, Yvonne, can you put yourself on uh, mute for a second? It might help the echo. Great. So yeah, with mentoring, yeah, we never used to call it that 40 years ago. When I was a child growing up, I didn't have mentors. I just had people that were very influential in my life. Now I've got to the age that I am now, I suddenly realized that I have had some of the greatest mentors in my life. You know, uncles, I've had aunties, I've had gym instructors, teachers at school, you know, people who today are still in, in my life giving me wor wise words. Yeah, sometimes the person who's your mentor isn't necessarily the person that they, were, they, they said they would be or you, you, you thought they would be. Like, I have one friend, He's just a, he's like, how can I put it? I think he's got like a, a photographic memory. Now it's not that I want to be him or I want to be as clever as him because he can retain facts and figures like, you know, what time did the train leave that Prince Charles left to go to see Princess Diana on the 13th of June, 1962. Like, you know, not too much, too much. But he can recall that kind of stuff. But what he has been to me has been a person who, sometimes when I'm looking for information, he can just go, right, this is the facts as they are. And I'm a factual kind of guy. And I see that guy as a mentor. So where you are at, Shalomi, is you're looking for love, but maybe right now in your life, what you're looking for is someone to guide you, someone to give you the, the, the you know, a good friend. I mean, ultimately, most women, I'd say most, don't happen to always happen, but they've got a girlfriend or a boyfriend who they ring up and say, I've met this guy and he's this, he's six foot tall and he's got a big white beard. He's got muscles all over and he's a mentor and he does this and he does that. And you go, and she goes, oh, he sounds lovely. Are you yeah, describing then, yourself, Tony? Sorry? <laughs> are, you, are you describing yourself there? I'm using a little bit, I mean, you know, but I'm, I'm also adding a bit for, uh, for juiciness, you know. Listen, you're putting it out there, you're putting it, listen, Tony's looking for love, you know, guys. He's no, 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 I'm not, not, not wrong with that, you know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Um, I understand. I'm, I'm just um, saying, I'm just saying that essentially you've got somebody next to you, a partner in crime almost, who you can say, right, we're going down this dating route. What am I looking for? How do I present myself? You know, what should I be? What should I be doing? You know, I've heard some 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 women come on and or, or I've spoken to, and they go, you know, if I go out with a guy, he's getting no sex for three months. Fine, 
you got to find a man who's willing to go with you for three months, knowing full well that you want to develop a relationship with that person before you get intimate. Yeah. And if he isn't willing to wait, then he's the wrong type of person for you. Yeah. Now that there, Patrick's going to nod in his head vociferously to say, yeah, great. That's a concept a lot of women are not able to do. Now, I'm not saying it's for you, but it could be something for you that you might go, you know what, that might work for me. Because when I get three months down the line, I've got someone who's invested in me. And it's not that they're just going to say, you know what, I'm going to sit there and listen to this woman for three months and sleep with other women until the three month day comes up and say, right, are you ready to sleep with me? No. Nah. I need to have that investment time together, quality time, as you're saying, you know, words of affirmation, touch, all these things have got to be going on. And after three months, you go, you know what, this guy, he could get it. Now, that may not be what you, you need to be doing, but if you have a partner, you can, you can have a, you can, you know, you can bounce off ideas with that partner and say, you know what, so this is the guy, he's good looking, he's everything that I'm looking for physically. Now let's talk about the mental aspect. What's he bringing to the table mentally? And he, this partner is going to tell you, well, test him, do this, ask him these questions. And on, on the basis of that, you then work out whether this guy is actually your soulmate, because that's what I'm all, that's what I'm about. I'm looking for a soulmate, someone who likes the same music as me, someone who likes to go on holiday, somebody likes a bit of massage, somebody likes, you know, all the things that I like. So ultimately, that's what I'm saying to you, Shalomi. Get yourself a mentor, somebody who you can be your partner in crime in entering into this world so that you're not, you don't feel like you're on your own. You shouldn't feel like you're on your own. And, and, and also, the other thing is, the mentor can be a man. Because men can be the best, some of the best analyzers of another man. Yeah? Well, I, I didn't even know that dating was so complicated. Yeah, look, we've got another but sorry, Shalomi. We have got listen, just 15 minutes left of the Ace show, and we've got Ace in, in another man who's come in um on on the show. Ace, we're talking about the, the love, love languages, just mm -hmm. for you to know, however. We've, it, we've kind of sidetracked and we were like talking about children. Do you want to date men with children without children? And some of the women were like myself was saying, we, you know, we don't really want to date a man with young kids and red, et cetera. But you're yeah, late in the conversation. So we're just, uh, you just missed Tony um, talking to Shalomi and saying that a man could be a good mentor for her in terms of love because Shalomi's looking for love and, um, Tony was saying that, you know, maybe she needs a mentor. Um, so let me just, before I throw it back out, let me just go through those love languages again. We've got words of affirmation, gifts, acts of service, quality time and physical touch. Guys, what each one of us have done, the, uh, we didn't speak to, um, is it Anne-Marie Henry? Are you there, Anne-Marie? As well. I am, yes, sorry. Sorry, yes, I was just listening in. That's all right. I did, did you I did do, do the did test? I did do the test online. Yeah. And it's quality. Mine came out at the highest of quality time. Did that surprise you? Um, no, because I think that's what I was looking for anyway. Right. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Right. And what I want to say quickly before, because we're going to go before, but before I say anything else, is that if you are seeing somebody or talking to somebody, it would be a good idea to get them to do the test for themselves and give you the answer. So that way you know how they like to be loved, how they like to be talked to, how they like to be communicated to. And so you're starting off on a better foot, a higher foot, because you already know how that person wants to receive, all right? So, 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 you know, like Ruth was saying, she's a touchy touchy feely person. But if, if I was a bloke, right, because, on my one that came in last, right? Physical touch. So for me, the a man who's all like, touchy, 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 would probably do my head in. It's not gonna work for me, does, does that make sense? So if I can say that to him, 
I'm not saying I don't like to be touched, but it's too much, too much. If I've got something to do, let me do what I'm doing. I'm an acts of service person. So if you want to, to get my attention, do something for me, help me. Show me that you love me. I'm a show me person. Don't tell me because talk is cheap. Show me, show me. It's in your action. Everything is in your action. So guys, we're coming down to the last maybe 10, 10 minutes. I want to know how you guys feel now, now that you know your love language and reflecting back to the past of your past relationships, can you see where there may have been like discrepancies in or how you handle certain situations and how you could have handled those situations differently if the love language was known. Can you, could, could, does anyone want, I can see Karen, shake. Karen just come in there and just, and, and just tell us what your, what your findings were. Um, I think for my ex-husband, his may have been words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. He likes when people are saying, oh, you're great, you're good, you're this, you're that, you're that. He likes that. And I know he likes that now. While for me, as you say, talk is cheap. I'm more of an actions person. So I could see what, where if I was, you know, the thing is, I would still, you know, push him up and say, you know, do this. This is going to help us. It's going to be better. But that still takes um, physical, a physical act. But in terms of just somebody just saying all the time, you're this and you're that, that doesn't really touch me. What touches me is the acts of service and the quality time and stuff like that. So I can see where we really weren't on the same page. But what I wanted to say is just because my, if, if for instance, if my top one was physical touch and my partner's one, bottom one is physical touch, it doesn't mean that that person isn't for you. No, no, that's, that's not what I meant. Right, exactly. I meant. It just, I just wanted to make that point. You just have to find a way of yes. somehow scratching his back when his back needs scratching, mm -hmm. but then for him to know you're not going to be scratching his back all the time. Do you know what right. I mean? That's it. So Absolutely. Absolutely. That is something that I'd be very interested in finding out how it works. Because as I said to you, one of my languages slipped right down, where mm -hmm. it's my second lowest one, which is gifts. Mm -hmm. and for me, yeah. gifts is, is a very big thing. I'm a big giver. Mm -hmm. And I would, if I'm with someone or know someone, I try to always get something which suits them so, so much. But then mm -hmm. I expect it back, back. And when I don't get it back, I realize that that makes me a bit irritable because I think you didn't think about me. Now you're giving me vouchers again, again, again. And I'm, you know, you like astronomy. I'm getting you a certificate for a year to, to uh, the Nautical Institute in Greenwich. And this is what you're doing, you understand? Mm -hmm. So for me, it used to be gifts, but now I realize it's come down a lot because for my current partner, his is not gifts at all. Right. So I've had to adjust a little bit what I yeah, expect. You do. And, and the thing is, it's really, really key what you said just there, because at the end of the day, like we say, it doesn't mean that just because your things are different doesn't mean to say that you're not compatible. It just gives you a heads up. So this is yeah. how this person works. This is what this person likes. Because I think, I mean, we didn't even ask Ace. I'm going to come in two seconds, Ace, and find out what your love language is. Right. Oh, what's yours? What are you saying, Tony? 35%. But I can't see the rest of it, babe. So you're going to have to say quickly, jump in. Zero. Gifts is 0%, I can see that. Yeah, but gifts is 0%, quality time's 35%, and physical touch is 32%. Right. So that's how you like, that's how you like to be loved. Mine was, mine surprised me. Uh, mine is acts of service. I knew that, I knew that. But my secondary one was gifts. And I'm like, really? You know? If I get gifts, I get gifts. I, I would have thought it would have been more quality time because that's how I think I am. But that was a surprise to me. Ace, come in quickly. Good evening, everybody. Sorry for coming in so late. Um, just picking up on the conversation where you left off. For me, myself, my love language is definitely quality time. But I agree with Karen 100% because... Love language is a way of not only understanding yourself better, 
it's, a, it's model thinking, but also understanding your partner better. And Karen made a very good point that even when you you have completely different love language, it doesn't mean you're incompatible. It's just understanding each other's language, love languages and how each other communicates because we all communicate our love language differently. And if that's not reciprocated by the partner, that's when there, there's an unbalance. But when you start to understand you commun how each other communicate, it can be um, harmonious. But for me, my top love language for me personally is all about quality time. And then secondly, followed by gifts. But gifts meaning I like to give. I'm a very giving person. I'm not necessarily a good receiver. Thank you. And just to clarify, gifts doesn't mean that you're a gold digger. Because some people think that when you when you like to receive, it's like you if somebody sees a you know like um, I don't eat chocolate uh, hardly ever, but if you were to buy me chocolate, it would have to be like a Lindor, you know the little balls. So if yes, yeah, so the Carol's like yes. So if somebody said oh like you know you can get the long ones. There's a little bar one. There's a red one. So you could just be in the supermarket and see that. So oh I saw this and thought of you. For me, it'd be like oh. That's nice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, it's not a thing. Do you know what I mean? Gifts is, gifts is not a thing. I'd rather quality time. Cheryl, come in quickly. I just wanted to say that I'm actually surprised at how much I'm actually agreeing with a lot of what Tony is saying tonight. <laughs> yeah. I'm in shock, Tony. <laughs> you know, that's the one thing about um communication it, it, it's like the more that you get to know people and the more we're talking on this forum everybody is getting to know understand a bit more about the other people and perhaps seeing um other sides to people that you don't expect so i just want i just wanted to say that but i, I also think that you know i think if a lot of us knew about this love which when we were young then we would probably be in, in, in a different situation right now because I'd never heard about the five languages till last week. And, and, and then having a look at it and like, like, I think you and I are very similar, you know, we're friends, but we, we were also very similar, I think, in what we like in life and, and, and what we want to do. Who are you talking about, Cheryl? Are you talking about Yvonne or me? No, I'm talking about Yvonne and me are very similar, <laughs> but, but agreeing with a lot of what you say that, that was shocked me. <laughs> no, no oh, so, so just so you're aware of it, if, um, if anybody wants a love mentor, come see me. Yeah, I, I've got a little something to give, and I think Patrick's a similar one. I yeah. think Patrick could be a love mentor for somebody. You know, if you're not sure about a guy, you know, give us a two. We'll we'll help you out. <laughs> I, I definitely think Patrick. You know, Patrick. I've, I've got I've got an idea, right? I've got an idea, ladies. If you haven't got no one to give you away, I'll give you away. <laughs> Isn't that nice? That's lovely. That's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that's a really good idea. I think Shil Shilomi, I think you you are, I thank you for being so brutally honest. Because there are lots there are lots of people that would not be so honest to say that you've never been in love. And you know, and that, you know, that life life there's obviously things in your life that have made you behave that way, you know, and, 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 and treat your relationships that way. So maybe it would be a great thing. I have to say, I keep harping on about it, but my husband taught me a lot because he had been, he was a widow and he'd been married for 35 years. So he knew what he was doing, you know, and he knew what marriage was about and he taught me a lot. So yeah, there's a lot to be said. I think you two should perhaps get together. Um, to, Tony and Patrick, and, and, and set up a little business. <laughs> Can't hear you, Yvonne. Can't hear you, Yvonne. Right, now I was just going, because I'm going to the chat room, I'm trying to keep up. Right, so Lorraine has said, I don't know where, Lorraine, open up yourself. Put up your thing. Um, Lorraine has got her thing, her findings was, she likes words of affirmation. That's her love language. Gifts uh, was her second. A quality time was her third. So 
That's um, Carol's love language. Now, guys, I want you to take this information away with you and use it to your advantage when you are looking for love. Now, we know this and we're going to continue this next week. But before we go, I do want to let you know something that's happening, which is really, really exciting. You see this young man down at the bottom there called Ace. Ace and I are starting a TV program on Sunday. Uh, we are going to be filming. Yeah, there you go. We're going to be filming uh, the first of the show. It's called Love Zone. And um, we've been doing a, a, a show on his show. He has another show. He's another presenter. And it's gone so well that the uh, media production company wants us to do a show. So we're starting our own show this Sunday at 12 o'clock. It's going to be shown on YouTube. So I will be sending that out and it will be a weekly show. Um, and we're gonna, we're actually gonna start talking about um, the love language. We're starting there. It's going, the show is about relationships. So please do join us. It's, we're gonna be live in a new, in a studio. It's, it's incredible. I'm so excited. So, so, so excited. So please do support, tell your friends at 12 o'clock on Sunday. Uh, that's the 3rd of May, right? And, um, and it's called Love Zone. So yeah, so guys, before we go, I hope, um, did you guys find this talk useful? Right, so I'm, I'm, unmute yourself if you wanna say something. We're getting lots of thumbs up. I think we've had some good responses from Facebook as well. I think we need to keep this conversation going and we need to expand it. We're gonna look at many, many, many different things. Um, some of the things that Shalomi has said today has kind of sparked some questions in my mind, you know, to talk about, you know, when do you have sex? You know, when you meet somebody, when is the best time to have sex? Because at the end of the day, we are grown folk and there are, I know some of you may not want to be discussing that, but I think it's a conversation that needs to be had, you know, because some of us don't even know, some of us have never really spoken about it. So I think this is an open and frank conversation that we need to have. So we are- Guys, Can I jump in on that one, Yvonne? Just so you're aware. One, you've got like half a second. Okay, I do, I, do a, I do a different podcast with a bunch of guys. We're all fathers. It's called the Black Fathers Network, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I can tell you for a fact, sex is a lot higher on that conversation list amongst the fellas as opposed to where it is here amongst the women. I think, I think it depends on the group of women that you... Because, anyway, I think you know that I ain't got no, no problem about talking about nothing. I will talk. Oh, why? When you're ready, let me know. Very openly. So, you know, and bring the guys on, bring them in. Listen, those of you who are listening on the www. we are about to leave the show, but I want to thank you for joining us this evening. I hope you got something out of this conversation. I hope it has highlighted to you that you, what love language that you want. If you want to find out more about the love language, contact me on Facebook or send me a, a WhatsApp or an email info at involvemichelle.com but for now i want to thank you for joining us those of you on facebook stay there i want to thank you those of you who are on the www dot and we will be back next week fantastic right so we are now out of the ww dot we are out so i just needed to come out of that so i hope guys that you've got some value out of this today and um like i said we'll be back here next week now normally i, I go over session and we like have a little something something and and um cheryl's saying i can't hear you I'm saying go get some rest though. So yes, exactly. So I've got some work to catch up on and I've got things to do. So I'm going to end tonight's session here. It's been great. Do you know what? I love you guys, you know. I love you guys. I love you guys. I love you guys. We'll be back here next week. Um, and we're going to continue. We're going to go up. Um, we're going to move up a notch. We're going to keep talking. 
So, and like I say, if those of you who want to listen in on Sunday at 12 o'clock on YouTube, I will put the link all over my Facebook so you get to know. And so please, please support. And so for me, Yvonne Michelle, I'm wishing you all, those of you who are on Facebook, I'm wishing you a good night. Stay safe, stay blessed and get out there and love and be loved. Hey Karen, you got a nice smile there, girl. Hey. Me. Karen, you have a nice <laughs> smile. Come on, you hear me? Thanks for coming, Karen. Karen. Yeah, you know Karen. what I just want to say to the men? Your hats are doing it. Yeah. Let's, yeah. See, yeah. What, let's see what we do yeah. next week, yeah? Let's, let's see what we do next week. We'd suit for the wedding. Each other and you have our crowns, our hair yeah. is our crowns. crowns. Yeah. Hey, Sharon, what part of the country are you in? I'm in London. Okay. I thought you were in Barbados. I thought no, so. No, almost, almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Barbados. okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Good Take night. it easy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. 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 Good night.